number two choice, following Greenby, which is located at the other end of Stony Magic Road, which is the flight pass, is considered. Mr. May, this amendment calls on Cabinet to support Ms. Hunter and Mr. Singh in identifying the site that is not within Willow's precious clean grounds, while maintaining the safety and security of Willow residents. Mr. May, this amendment touches that, and I hope the Council will give its full support. Thank you, Mr. May. I'm going to open this to the, the floor for any Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to make uh, one main point of view. It's suggest, the Chris suggests that um, the, the, the decision of the, the Lane Group on the uh, Scrutiny Committee was politically noisy. I think it's, it's frankly appalling. Um, I think I can say without you know, any hesitation, our <coughs> paramount concern has always been the safety of local residents. And suggesting that there's any kind of political motivation, I think it's, you know, it's really um, it's un unnecessary. And I, I, I hope you withdraw that, uh, Chris, because I, I, I think it's, it's, it actually uh, is, is, is totally unnecessary. Um, my uh, point, other point, uh, Mr. Mayor, and this is why we'll be voting against this amendment, is that in a sense you're preempting the outcome of the planning committee. The planning committee quite rightly will discuss all of these, these issues that you've raised and will come to a decision on the planning grounds. I think for us to agree this amendment tonight, I mean, first of all, I would question the kind of legality of it really more than anything else, but I think it is to totally undermine the job, the important job that the planning committee has got. So for those reasons, we'll be voting against this amendment tonight. Thank you. 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 Thank some considerable time ago, I said I thought there had to be a way in which the council and the fire service agreed on a site that was acceptable. A lot of time has passed. If, for example, the planning committee were to reject the site that is being under discussion, we would then be starting a new search for a new site. So it seemed logical, not to be judging the planning committee, but if they did say they didn't like the site under consideration, even more time would be lost. So it would seem logical to me to follow Council Blakey's suggestion of looking for an acceptable site. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Okay, well, we'll move on to the seconds then. Councillor Barry. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I second this amendment. I'm fully endorsed by my colleague, Councillor Blakey, has said. Mr. Mayor, I've had no issues at all with Dan Stevens, the Chief Fire Officer from the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service. I understand that he has a difficult job to do under difficult financial restraints, but there are alternative choices. Mr. Mayor, as you've heard, there is an alternative council on site just 600 metres away, which is not within Greenbelt. Why is this site not even being accessible? Mr. Mayor, this is about the protection of 26,000 residents of West Will. Surely every option should be considered, especially in the light of the pre application <coughs> response from Will Plans to Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service, which said the planning permission is unlikely to be granted within the Green Belt due to their fallback scenario to redevelop up the fire station. Mr. Mayor, there should be no political gain from an issue as important as this. An issue of protecting 26,000 residents at the same time <coughs> protecting our precious green belt. Mr. Mayor, I echo, I echo my colleague's call on Cabinet to support the Merseyside Fire and Rescue Service in identifying the site that is not within Whittle's precious green belt while maintaining the safety and security of the rural residents. Mr. Mayor, I ask the Council to support this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barry. Can I ask the original motion seconder to second?
So you, do, you don't wish to second, you don't wish to speak? The motion. Councillor Silver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Phil, was, Phil was quite right when he said about politicising this. The Committee of Regeneration and Environment never politicised this, Mr. Mayor. Um, we, we followed the correct procedures. We're, we're interested and only interested in the safety of the 26,000 residents from Wales West. And we followed the lead from, um, the fire, from the fire service, from the chief fire officer, who came along to our last meeting. And for, for Chris Blakely to mention Christina Mostrath, Christina was most concerned about building on Greenbelt Land. But the chief fire officer responded and allayed those fears and we, we vote accordingly. It is a planning decision, it will be left to planning, and we're following those procedures to the letter. Um, and that's all I've got to say, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Right, moving on to the vote on the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment moved by Council Baker, please indicate. All those against? Any abstentions? Just one. Okay. Thank you. That's clearly lost. Um, I'm now going to vote on the original uh, motion. All those in favour? Council is invited to consider the following notices of motion. 
which have been submitted in the order of standard of order 7 and which I consider are appropriate to be debated this evening. The motions to be debated are the ones relating to A, strong, stable economy and benefit for rural residents, trade union bill, will the youth zone, CSR and autumn statement. With regards to the notice of motion, I have decided that it is more conductive to the dispatch of business and that they be dealt with as the following. Hamilton Square, effective scrutiny of control, the controversial scheme, be referred to the Regeneration and Environmental Policy Performance Committee. Yeah. Investing in our constituencies, be referred to the cabinet. Would somebody like to move the order in which these motions should be debated? Of those eligible, eligible to vote 
do so. 40% of those eligible to vote support industrial action. This is from a government who were returned by 24% of all people eligible to vote and received 37% of all votes cast. This is hypocrisy. The change in the use of agency workers is also a worrying development. The balanced supply of agency workers to replace strikers has been in place for more than 30 years and is an established part of UK industrial relations practice. The bill will force unions to give 14 days notice of any strike action and will allow employers to use agency temporary workers to break strikes. The use of agency workers will undermine industrial relations, they will leave disputes unresolved and negotiations abandoned. The use of agency workers is also likely to damage employees' sense of goodwill. At best, this could damage staff morale. Quite simply, Mr. Mayor, this is putting worker against worker. The insistence on a postal ballot, Mr. Mayor. The government has refused consistently to consider online balloting for union members voting in strike action. Secure online balloting that would let people return a vote by computer or mobile. Postal voting is an imperfect system too and shares the same vulnerabilities as secure online. Hundreds of successful secure online ballots have already been run by organisations of all types, including the Conservative Party, who seem to have forgotten that they elected their London mayoral candidate, Zach Smith, online recently. Again, hypocrisy. Change to political funds. Political funds will require all existing 4.9 million union members to sign a form at least every five years stating they're opting into paying a political levy. The political funds of unions are Labour's chief source of reliable donations, and some union leaders have warned the planned reform will baffle the party. It's said that the top 100 companies that donated to the Conservatives, between them, gave £50.8 million. Pound without the consent of individual shareholders. This measure is designed with one goal in mind, to choke off funding to the Labour Party by a government who are obsessed with the party's relationship with the trade union movement and hell bent on destroying them both. The most disgraceful aspect of this bill, Mr Mayor, is the change to picketing. Under the bill as it stands, trade unions will be required to appoint a picket supervisor and supply that supervisor with a letter of authorisation. Thereafter, either the union or the supervisor will be required to tell the police the supervisor's name and how they will be contacted. The supervisor will show the letter of authorisation to a police constable or to any person who reasonably asks to see it. And, worst of all, Mr Mayor, the picket supervisor must wear a badge, armband or other item that readily identifies him as a picket supervisor. Failure to comply with any of these obligations will mean the union loses legal protection for the picketing. Tory backbencher David Davis attacked these picketing provisions of the bill for their violation of the right to freedom of association, having described them as reminiscent of Franco Spain. It's not often, if ever, I agree with the Tory MP. This is one occasion where I have. The bill will also ban check off, direct deduction of union fees. At payroll. This ban will not include any other payroll deductions such as charity payments, pension and cycle schemes, and therefore it's so late to make it harder for employees to maintain union membership and wrap up unions in red tape to divert the representatives from their core task, which is looking after their members. The bill targets workplace representation in the public sector by requiring public sector employees to provide information about the amount of facility time granted to TU representatives and the cost of it. This is an open invitation for the anti-union media to attack any public authority which respects the rights of its workers to be represented by a trade union official. An attack is often echoed in this chamber from the members opposite about where we're funding for full-time trade union officials. In conclusion, Mr. Mayor, productive industrial relations underpin the most successful organisations, including our own council, and I'm proud of the relationship that we, we, we have with our trade unions, despite the fact that there have been some rocky roads. Industrial action is never taken, undertaken 
lightly. I know with these inconvenience more by industrial action than the workers who are lazy losing a day's pay. We must not allow our hard-won democratic rights to be undermined by a government who has laughably rebranded itself as the Workers' Party. We just want to go now. <laughs> the bill is a cynical attempt to choke off funding to the Labour Party, to undermine the rights of all working people, and is an attack on democracy itself. I urge every trade union member in this chamber to, to oppose this bill and expose it for what it really is. Write to the 
standards to which the UK are bound. Mr Mayor, I conclude. I urge the Council to support this motion to oppose this government's trade union bill.
Bill Davis at four. That's a Bill Davis at four. That's a Doughty at four. That's a Elston at four. That's a Edison at four. That's a Douglas at four. That's a Crazy at That's a Gilchrist at four. That's a Green at four. That's a Gregson at four. That's a Hackett at four. That's a Hayes at four. That's a Andrew Watson at four. Johnson. Four. That's Adrian Jones. Four. That's Chris Jones. Four. That's a Kenny. Four. That's a Leach. Four. That's a Hamish Four. That's a Warren Duffin. Four. That's a Weedon. Four. That's a Mooney. Four. That's a Nipot. Four. That's a Lowry. Four. That's a Patrick. Four. That's a Global.
many times of those uh, other changes. Agree. Agree. Thank you. <coughs> I've had no other notifications, but I just want to wish everybody a warm, safe, and happy Christmas. And you can join me in the round room for a lecture. Thank you, Councillor.